I'm good without that, Jesus. I'm good without you. I'm good without God. And we have our plans and we have our agenda and we have our dreams and everything seems to be moving in the way that we want it to move. And we think, okay, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. And then a phone call changes everything. And it's the doctor and the tests are positive. Or it's your spouse and the marriage is ending and it changes everything. You were so competent before. You were so full of yourself before. You were so assured of your ability to make your life what you wanted your life to be. But you have met failure face to face. Nothing makes us more open to crazy advice from preachers than failure. You'd never listen to me if you hadn't met failure. Sometimes we have to meet failure before we find faith. I got great news. Jesus is here for failures. Deep down inside of us, we know we should be better. We do this kind of thing. All right, this is the year. This is the year I'm going to get in shape. And we go to the gym. And who do we see at the gym? The people who don't need to be at the gym. You look at those people and say, hey, you're done. Make room for the rest of us fatties. But maybe for you this year, your failure is not just in some stupid resolution. Maybe it's a failed marriage or a failed business or a failed job or you've been laid off or a relationship with a friend has gone sour or maybe, maybe you're one of those people who on the outside looks very together, but on the inside, you're falling apart. Why do we fail? We fail because we were born to fail. I'm looking at a bunch of born failures and you're looking at one too. In the Bible, when, when Israel needed a king, they first got a bad king named Saul. And then they got this guy named David. And David, on his first day out, beats the biggest enemy he could find. And he wins every battle he ever fights. Imagine that. Imagine a football team that could win every game all season long and win the Super Bowl. He looks successful. And the Bible says he's handsome, in shape. And they sing songs about David. David, David, he's our man. If he can't do it, no one can. And it looks like David is going to be the guy, the guy that doesn't fail. And then he's up on his roof one night and he sees a lady bathing nakedly, finds out she's married, brings her into his bedroom anyway and sleeps with her. And then she gets pregnant and he has to connive and contrive a way to kill her husband and marry her. And he does it. And then the prophet comes to David and says, you have done this and God has seen it. David falls to pieces. He says, oh my gosh, you're right. I did, I did, I did. it." And he repents and he writes this, he writes this beautiful psalm called Psalm 51. The number is Psalm 51. He sings about his repentance. He says, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Calls out to God. And in Psalm 51, he makes a very profound theological statement. And here's what he says. I was born a sinner. I was born a failure. Yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. Do you know why we fail at New Year's resolutions? Because we're made to. Do you know why we fail at even our own standard? That's what's amazing about failing New Year's resolutions. For everybody who thinks that they're good at obeying God and you aren't, just so you know, I know you're not because even the standards that you set for yourself, you don't keep. We're born to fail. Jesus succeeds where we fail. Jesus is our true and better David, our king who killed our Goliath with his own sword. He beat death with death and he won our victory and he never failed. And Paul unpacks this for us theologically in Romans chapter five. Just as sin came through to the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all men sinned. And then he says this, but the free gift is not like the trespass, the free gift of God's grace. For if many died through one man's trespass, that's Adam's trespass, much more will have the grace of God, the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ. Notice he's making a correlation. Adam's sin, Jesus' righteousness, abounded to many. And then he says, therefore, as one trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all men. He's saying, look, Everybody's born a sinner because since the Garden of Eden and Adam's failure, we're all born failures. But then he says this, but the good news is that one man's act of righteousness, one man's success now becomes everybody's success who puts their faith in that man. So Jesus doesn't just succeed where we fail to say, hey, you're a failure and I'm a success. He succeeds for us so that by the one man's obedience, Jesus' obedience, the many will be made righteous. I am not righteous by what I have done. I am righteous because of what Jesus has done. That's 
the gospel message. That's what church should be. And the Bible is so cool because where does Adam fail? In a garden. And where does Jesus succeed? In the garden of Gethsemane. And he said three times, not my will, but yours be done. And then he was placed on a tree. Hey, how did Adam fail? He took the fruit off the tree and ate the fruit. How does Jesus succeed? He becomes the fruit, is placed back on the tree. And when we take communion, we take his body and we eat and we succeed because he won the battle we lost. And then he rises again on the third day in a garden. So the picture is Garden of Gethsemane, cross, tree of life, now the new tree of life, Garden of the tomb. In the Bible, when it describes Edom, it says that the, the tree of life was in the midst of the garden. The tree was in the middle of the garden. Now you have this beautiful picture that, that's painted in the Gospels. Garden of Gethsemane, garden tomb, and in the middle, the new tree of life. Who's Jesus? I don't know about you, but I just get like shivers up my spine when I hear stuff like that. That's how I know that this has to be the word of God. Because Jewish peasants in the first century can't make this stuff up. It's the truth of the Bible for you. Jesus succeeds where we fail. There's only two kinds of people here today. The people who say, yeah, I'm a failure. And the people who don't know it yet, 